guys, this is Dr. Bailey. I'm a practicing orthodontist and the co-founder of Trayminder. Today I'm going to go over with you my selection criteria for my patients on how often I want them to wear their clear aligners for before switching to the next set. I know that a lot of people are on a weekly change. Some of my patients are on a 10 day or even 14 or longer day change period. And why is that? I, that's a pretty common question. So I wanted to go over that with you. Now, before we get started, I just want to say that this is for educational purposes only and to please consult with your own treating orthodontist uh, on advice for your particular case. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I look at is age. This is really big. Uh, you know, they have done lots and lots of studies that have shown that adolescents, kids, teenagers, their teeth move faster and with less pain than adults. And so because of that, I'll usually start my adolescence teens uh, with a seven day wear schedule and for my adults, and, and that is usually in the 20s or above, they will do either a 10 or 14 day schedule. All right, so the second thing I look at is whether, and this is more so for my grown, for my adult patients, uh, whether they are on certain drugs or not. Okay, so certain drugs like IV bisphosphonates or any sort of uh, drugs that, inc like estrogens, that increase bone mass and mineralization, those drugs will actually slow down bone, uh, slow down tooth movement and so I do take that into consideration. Now a lot of you are taking NSAIDs which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and the most common NSAIDs are uh, ibuprofen like Motrin, Advil, um, also naproxen like Aleve or high doses of aspirin, those are all NSAIDs. And research have sh has shown that NSAIDs do inhibit uh, or slow down tooth movement by inhibiting some of the osteoclast activity. So those are some things to keep in mind if you are taking NSAIDs for, for dental pain. So usually for my own patients, if they can tolerate it and they're not allergic, I'd rather my patients take something like Tylenol, okay? And Tylenol does not slow down tooth movement. Uh, the third thing I look at is the complexity of the tooth movement. So there are a lot of movements that are involved in orthodontic treatment and some movements are more predictable and easier than others. So easy movements are tipping of teeth. So that's where if you have one tooth sticking out, one tooth in, tipping teeth are relatively easy. So that is not something I worry too much about. Rotations are when teeth are turned and rotations, unless they're severe, are usually pretty predictable. So that's not too complicated. The um, things that are getting a little more complex are torque movements. Torque is when you are are sort of tipping the root of your teeth that's the part of the tooth that you can't see and that torquing is a little bit more difficult of a movement uh, things that are difficult are uh, something called a segmental distalization which just basically means that moving teeth back in order to decrease an overjet or to correct a class 2 bite so those movements are difficult um, and anything that involves rubber bands for anchorage those things are difficult so the more complex movements you have treatment planned, the higher number of days I will usually prescribe for you to wear your aligners for. And the reason is because if it's a difficult movement, the teeth must move before you switch on to the next tray. If you switch too quickly and the teeth are not, not actually where they need to be, if you switch too soon to the next set, your teeth will stop tracking, meaning that the teeth will not fit well within the trays and then you get more and more off course and that's actually bad. So in cases like that, I actually will have my patients move backwards a few aligners until we find the best fitting tray and then go from there. So you, I really don't want to have to do that. And so I do look at each individual case carefully and kind of determine what kind of movements are planned so that I can increase the predictability of the, of the teeth moving. 
Um, the fourth thing I look at is bite correction. Bite correction is where, so I always tell my patients, aligners and braces, they align your teeth. That's it. Rubber bands actually move your teeth, top and bottom teeth in a certain way so that we can correct your bite. Your a, a good bite is basically, it, it just means that your top teeth and bottom teeth, they fit well together in, in such a way so that, uh, you know, you're not wearing down your teeth. It's more gentle on your TMJ. It's better for speech and for eating. So having a good bite is like having a good foundation for your home. Your home can't just look good on the outside. It must have a good foundation for the long-term stability of, of your, of your oral health. Okay. So if you are prescribed elastics, then Sometimes what can happen is that the bite correction part of your treatment can take longer than the alignment part of your treatment. So in some cases, if I move along too quickly, if, if my patients are switching their aligners every seven days, but by the time we finish the set of aligners, the bite isn't fully corrected yet, then my patients aren't done. I'm going to have to order more aligners for them in order for the bite correction process to finish. So you, it's kind of like cooking, you know, your, you are, your slowest moving part is the one that determines when the dinner will be ready, right? So in cases like that, even if I have a patient that has relatively easy teeth movement, but I will still have them wear each aligner for two weeks because they have a lot of bite correction that must be accomplished. And so hopefully that makes sense. Um, the fifth thing I look at is the periodontal status uh, of the patient as well as the root length of each tooth. Uh, so what does that mean? So periodontal health is is basically your, you know, you've got your tooth and then you've got the root, right? The root is the part of the tooth that you can't see. That's the part that's buried in the bone. Just like a tree, you can see the tree and then you have your root structure beneath the ground in the soil. So for some patients that have periodontal disease, their periodontium is reduced, which means that they have less bone to hold the tooth. And so the bone level is lower. When you have periodontal disease, that's really not a good, uncontrolled periodontal disease is a contraindication for orthodontic treatment. So if you have a lot of bone loss, actually moving teeth will exacerbate that condition and patients can end up losing their teeth and, and that's not a good situation. For people with reduced periodontium, I will usually decrease the, the amount of tooth movement for each aligner and I will probably have my patients wear each aligner for a longer period of time so that there's less risk of aggravating anything. Uh, and I also mentioned root length. So if you have, uh, and, and again, this is, you can only determine if you have a reduced root length if your orthodontist is taking an x-ray. And, and orthodontists do take x-rays before they uh, start your treatment. And it's important to look at that because if you have uh, some teeth that are short in the root length, then orthodontic treatment can uh shorten that even more some of my patients just just have short roots and so when that happens i'll try to reduce or even not move those teeth if possible or i slow treatment down drastically and increase the, the number of time they wear their aligners for so these are really important considerations because if you're not careful um too aggressive of movements you know whether it's the movement itself or too fast of changing your aligners can lead to mobility which is where your tooth starts to get quite loose and you can even have um you know, loss of teeth and, and other undesirable uh, effects. So please be careful with that. Uh, the number six thing that I look at is patient compliance. And, you know, I always tell my patients that the wear time is more important than the amount of force you put on a tooth, okay? And I'll do a little video on the, uh, the biology of tooth movement, but basically the research has shown that continuous light forces is the most effective way to move 
uh, your teeth. And so I usually tell my patients, wear your aligners 22 hours a day, and that's going to give you the best results. Okay, so like I said, I'll start for my pre preteens, my teens, they'll switch them out every seven days. For my grownups, I'll do 10 days. But I will usually tell my patients, hey, you know what? I'm going to start you off on the ideal, which means that, you know, I'm going to assume that you're going to wear your aligners 22 hours a day. And the reason why I do that is because people are the most motivated at the beginning of anything, your exercise routine, you know, your clear aligner therapy. So if you, if, if they can handle wearing 22 hours a day and they get into a really good habit, then chances are they're just going to go ahead and continue on on that schedule. But I'll usually tell my patients, hey, you know what, if, if you come back and your teeth are not tracking, you're not wearing enough time uh, for each day, then I'll just go ahead and slow down the number of days that you are switching and and we can go from there. So I usually give my patients the choice. It's kind of like saying, you know, you're you're in San Francisco, you're going to drive to LA. Uh, you know, you can you can bike there or you can take the you can drive there or you can take the plane there, right? You're going to get there eventually. It's just which method are you going to use to get there? So if you're going to fly there, you're going to get there faster but it just requires, you know, more money, right? So you have to you have to give in order to get something. And so to finish faster with more predictable results, you're just going to have to wear your aligners as instructed. So, um what are how do how can I tell? So that's the other thing. Patients will say, "Well, how do you know if your patients are actually wearing their trays, right? So there's a whole bunch of little ways that I can tell. Uh, for instance, you know, I look for tracking, you know, whether your teeth are moving as planned or not. And I can refer to the clinical digital plan and compare it clinically to the teeth and see what they look like. Um, uh, some of a lot of my patients use my my app Trayminder. Trayminder has a timer that will um, help you to remember to wear and change your trays and there's even a seven day, 30 day and 90 day average daily uh, wear statistics. So on you know you can see what the averages are. So if my patients are always tracking, you know, close to 22 hours a day, that's a really good sign. But I actually made a video uh, maybe two years ago on how your orthodontists know whether you're wearing your trays or not, and I'll provide a link below. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. Um, so, uh, you know, to, to wrap everything up, I just wanna say trust, trust your treating orthodontist when they tell you whether to switch your trays every seven days, 10 days, 14, whatever it is, because they are the ones that actually know the ins and outs of your case. You know, they know your root length. They know whether you have periodontal disease. They go through a medical history report with you. Um, they, they know what's going on. And so definitely trust their advice on what's best for you. And if you are doing a really good job, they're, let's say they're starting you on 14 days and you're wearing it 22 hours a day, following everything, then you can, you know, if, I would not be offended if my patient said to me, hey, Dr. Bailey, you know, um, my teeth are, it looks like they're tracking really well. I'm really getting the, in those 22 hours a day. You know, how do you feel if, um, would you feel comfortable switching me to a 10 day schedule and see what they say? I mean, they may say, Hey, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You can go ahead and switch to a 10 day. Or they might say, well, you know what? I would love to, but we need to have more time for you to wear rubber bands to fix your bite. So whatever it is, just just talk to them. You know, I, I am not offended when my patients ask me whether they can switch from a 14 to a 10 or 10 to a seven. I even put some patients on a five day schedule. You know, those are usually for my younger patients and they're doing refinements. So when you're, when my patients are doing refinements, the movements are smaller. We're kind of fine tuning the teeth to the finish line. And so usually for teens, refinement, 
no bite correction, yeah, five days is, is more than adequate, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, again, talk to your treating orthodontist and, and, and communicate with them. If you don't understand something, just ask, you know, doctors are not, they're used to answering lots of questions. And I don't think that they will be offended if you have certain questions or, or whatnot. So I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and you know let your friends know about it. And please consider subscribing. I have lots of videos coming up that I've planned for you guys that will answer a lot of questions that I get. So I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.